Hi there. Uh, I thought I'd go through the process of uh, building a fly ballast controller uh, using Rotorflight and I thought I'd step through the, the steps that you use to uh, load the hardware component of, of that. So um, it's in three main uh, components. The first bit is loading the, the firmware. Uh, the second bit is loading the, the manufactured supplied uh, configuration file. Uh, that, that has to be modified very slightly to be used for rotor flight, and then the last component is is remapping some of the some of the pins that are on the boards um, for use for the servos and things like that, so that we can use it for our single rotor helicopters. So the first step, I suppose, is to download some snapshots just from the rotor flight wiki. Um, download the configurator and the, uh, uh, the firmware for your, your board. So just on that, so I'm going to start with this board here, Foxia Mini F722 flight controller. Um, so we just go down to the specifications and, and have a look at what, what the board is. So the CPU is a, an F722 processor. And the next interesting bit is the, the firmware, so Foxia F722 V2. Okay, so going to the rotor flight, going to rotor flight, um, we go on to the update firmware um, tab, and then we can load firmware from the local. So we click on that one. So same as the uh, information we saw, it's a seven, uh, it's an F7 processor, so we use that one. We open and we flash that firmware. Okay, that that takes a while, so we'll go back to the back to the wiki page, the home page, and, and we'll go to this custom defaults remapping spreadsheet. So if we go to Rotorflight remapping spreadsheet. We open that up, and that takes a little while to open. We go file, make a copy, and just make a copy for yourself. Okay. Once that's loaded, uh, we've got to select the CPU type. So that one is the 722. And then as per our, our information, we, we're after this, this target. So Foxy uh, F722 V2. So that's this one here. If, if your board doesn't show up in this, which I, ha I haven't imported very many, so click on the import boards. That'll take you to the Betaflight Unified Targets page. Um, you can choose your, your board that you, you want. We'll, we'll choose to import this one. You select all of the information in that file. Copy. And then we go to the Betaflight Targets tab and scroll across to the last page and just paste it in. Now we need it in one single row, in one single column, so we just cut and paste it in. Just so that it, there it is. So that's an Omnix T4, so we go to the overview and you can see that the Omnix T4 is now in the list. So we're after this one anyway, but that's if you need to import a new one. So um, just having a look at this Foxy uh, flight controller. So this is the way we want to hook our boards up. So um, in this case, I, I prefer using the the multi-connector on the side here, uh, simply because you don't have to do as much soldering, or you can solder it directly to the cable. 
So in this uh, this situation, I want to connect my Survey 1 to Motor 1, Survey 2 to Motor 2, Survey 3 to Motor 3, and so on. Uh, the main speed controller I'm going to connect to the RX4. So uh, that's that's going to be our remapping that we're going to do. So going to the rotor flight, we can select those. Survey 1, Survey 2, Survey 3, Survey 4. And then the RX4 is going to be our motor 1. So that's it. So that that produces this uh, map over here. So that shows what timers are available. Um, and it also indicates, it says that they're D-shot capable. There are some some timers that uh, don't have that. That's a hardware capability. Um, so I've, I've got an example of another board. So this one you can see there's there's a board, a, a timer here that doesn't have D-shot, it is not capable. It's, it's um, yeah, so um, you, you're unable to connect a, a motor to that that uh, that runs on D-shot, so uh, we choose choose some of the others. Um, this is the same, this one doesn't have, isn't capable of, of that, that function either. Um, not that servos require that. Um, but it is preferable to use the, the hardware capable uh, timers, so it's called DMA. Um, so yeah, choose the other ones if, if you can. Um, so the next thing we've got to look at is that the, the timers that are used for the motors uh, can't clash with the timers for the servos. So motors and, and servos run on different frequencies, so they have to have different timers. So in this case, we're going to choose this one here, timer five for our motor one. So let's select AF2. Um, survey one, well, we've got to choose AF1. Survey two, we have to choose AF1. Survey three, we can, we, and, th and four, we can choose either of those. We'll just choose AF2. that builds our code down here. So just just on that, if if we were to, um, uh, it's not going to. So the in addition, we can also use a, a frequency input. So if we were to use say a frequency input there. So some speed controllers have an input for for frequency or for uh, the motor RPM. So that can be used for something like that. The addition of, of one of those, um, that has to have a separate timer to all of the others. So you can't have that clashing with anything else. So in this case, we have timer two and, and the motor timer clashing, or actually we'll select that timer one and timer one so that this, these two will clash. And that shows up here. So that, that'll show up with any of them if, if uh, it's not correct. So we'll select the default and we'll reselect our AF2. AF2. So that's complete. Okay, so the next step will be to load our rotor flight target. So this is the manufacturer component. This is directly from the the file that we copied and pasted earlier. Um, however, there's a few parameters that are removed that uh, that aren't valid for rotor flight. So we just we just copy that. We go back to our rotor flight, which is programmed successfully, and we reconnect. Okay. So we go to the command line and. We paste that in and then save. So that's configured the, the hardware as, um, as the manufacturer supplies it. So we want to do our remapping. So we go back to the overview page. We've, we've set up all of our timers. So we just select that.
copy. And then we paste that into the command line again. That remaps it for us. Save. Done. So that's that's now ready to have the servos uh, or the servo connectors soldered on, battery connector, um, speed controller, and then we can start doing our configuration of the of the software. So that's things like um, calibrating the accelerometer, setting up our servo throws, um, serial ports, receivers, and all of that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah. I hope that's helpful and uh, good luck with it.